This is Summoner's War version 5.0.8. We have two new monsters, the Demon and Gargoyle. So all of the units except for the Fire Demon have passives, um, but their skill ones are a little bit unique compared to the way we normally see units. But for the Demons, Sword of Destruction. Decreases the current HP of the enemy with the best HP status, bosses excluded, by 10% and attacks the enemy target to inflict damage that's proportional to the reduced HP. So, not quite sure if there's any other unique scaling in there, but it seems like a pretty pretty neat setup with the fixed damage. Um, the skill 2 here for Devil's Bargain absorbs all other allies' HP by 10% to attack all enemies, dealing damage that's proportional to the HP absorbed. Recovers the attack bar of all allies by 20% afterwards. It's a little bit neat. Utility, fixed damage kind of set up um the second skill that demons have uh madness judgment that the water one has consumes half of your current hp to attack the enemy target this attack will ignore a portion of the enemy's defense as your hp status worsens um slightly different uh between that i really like the idea of all of these like kind of fixed damage hp style skills um but let's go through the passives and the skills so the fire demon flames of hell Always perform an attack that has an attribute advantage on all enemies. Inflicts the number of continuous damage that's proportional to the amount of damage dealt for two turns. Hopefully that's uh, quite a few dots up there. But it seems like we have a lot of fire units that put up dots. You know, we have Bellinus, we have the Fire Demon now, and we have Rika, Bretta. You know, hopefully we can move that kind of skill kit to another unit. For the Water one, the passive is... Revives with little HP and fills up your attack bar by 100% if allies and enemies act for 12 turns when you're dead. So if you die, 12 turns go by, you'll automatically revive, basically. Um, for the Wind one, uh, Soul Stealer, this is the one that interests me the most. No one can be revived while you are on the battlefield. In addition, the damage you inflict on enemies will be increased by 20% each when an enemy or ally dies, accumulating up to five times. So this feels like a nice Grigo passive on a very tanky HP scaling unit. Um, super interested to see how that is. The light one has a skill called Red Battlefield. The attack bar of all allies will be increased by the proportion the damage dealt. So this uh, this one's kind of poorly worded. Um, the attack bar of all allies will be increased proportional to the damage dealt, and the damage you deal on enemies will be increased by 50% at the, at the maximum amount whenever all enemies and all allies on the battlefield receive damage. So, kind of a weird wording, not quite sure how the scaling is going to look on that and what the actual like requirements for everything is, but what I'm thinking here is that um, you increase attack bar of your allies based on how much damage you deal, and how much damage you deal will be increased up to 50% uh, based on how many different units have been hit before he moves. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, the Dark One has a skill called Purgatory, if you kill an enemy with your attack, you will revive one of your dead allies with HP that's the same amount of the, as the damage dealt to the enemy target. If other ally dies while you are dead, you will be revived with little HP and 100% attack bar. So a lot of these like weird reviving, you know, anti-revive, etc. mechanics. I'm interested to see how demons play out. Gargoyles. So the gargoyles are pretty interesting to me. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about their skill one. It could be really strong. Uh, Stone Claws attacks the enemy to inflict damage that increases according to your defense. Nice defense scaling units. And increases your defense by 20%, which accumulates up to five times. So, you know, a little built-in art of passive on the skill one there for self-defense. Uh, their skill two, Destructive Claws, inflicts damage on the enemy in proportion to your defense and destroys the target's HP by the amount of damage dealt. So defense scaling Beth, it seems like. Afterwards, you will be turned into a statue until the next turn starts. While you are a statue, you won't be able to move, but you will gain immunity against inability effects, receive 30% less damage, and recover your HP by 10% until the statue state is gone. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a like a Pater feel to it almost. I'm liking that. Um, and then the other one is Earth Strike. So inflicts damage on all enemies in proportion to your defense and provokes them for one turn with an 80% chance. Feels like a druid. A druid. Afterwards, you'll be turned into a statue until the next turn, and the exact same things happen. Um, so let's go through the passives on them. The fire one has statue of protection. If your turn ends with full HP, you will be turned into a statue until the next turn starts. The damage dealt on allies will be reduced gradually if the ally gets attacked with multiple hits when you return into a stone. So kind of this like 
pseudo global taunt where you want to make sure that he's not full HP. That way he doesn't get this uh, damage mitigation passive for his allies. Uh, so the water one, Statue of Robust. If your turn ends with less than 30% HP, you'll be turned into a statue until the next turn starts. The target that attacks you will have its attack power decreased for two turns when the target attacks you when you are turned into a statue. So attack break and you automatically become a, a statue at, lower, at low HP. Not as much interested in that one. It seems kind of meh to me. Uh, the Wind One Statue of Pain. When you return into a statue, inflicts damage that's proportionate to your defense to the target that attacks you. Also decreases your skill cooldown time when you get attacked with a critical hit. I think this one has more potential. Looks pretty interesting. Um, I like the the slight punish on AOE attacks and such. Uh, the Light One Statue of Trial. When you turn into a stone, increases the skill cooldown time of the target. It attacks you by two turns. That could be really, really good. Has the potential to be really good there. Uh, and the Dark One, a Statue of Immortal. When your turn ends, you will be turned into a statue until the next turn starts with a 30% chance. You can't get defeated when you are turned into a statue. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, hopefully, that won't be too busted, but it seems like the chance is pretty low, so I think it'll be... Another one of those 50-50 fun meme units, like when using Reno or Ludo or anything. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing um, how the new demons and gargoyles come out. Uh, note that the demons are all different types. So there's two attack types, two HP types, or sorry, three attack types. And for the gargoyles, I believe they're all defense type. Uh, besides that, we have a lot of actual content that's been changed. So Kairos Dungeon, Giants, Dragons, Necro now have four waves. Uh, they've deleted the second wave. So it now goes Trash Wave, Mid-Boss, Trash Wave, Boss. Um, the interesting thing with that, we finally got the convenience improvement in which we can now select the attack order on that, meaning we can select Mid-Boss instead of left or right or random. Uh, as well, Hall of Magic floors 5 through 10 have increased the amount of uh, mid-drop essences that we can get. Um, they were talking about a... in the like dev kind of note conversation that they had with people who were asking questions. They were saying, you know, we want to be able to break down high essences. And they said, you know, we'd rather just give you more mid essences. So can't get everything that we want, but it's still an improvement and I'm still happy about it. Uh, some changes to raids. Now, a lot of people are super concerned with the raid changes. A lot of people are like, oh my God, is my KB5 team dead? Does it not work anymore? I'm here to tell you that. I think your KB5 team is totally fine. Um, the changes that really come out of this are that R5 is much better if you're not running KB5. So if you're running, you know, regular raid teams or AP teams with twins or etc., it's a lot better. Raids have also become easier. Uh, beforehand, Crush of Doom and Breath of Doom gains an additional hit whenever uh, he loses 25% HP, so they gain up to three, which makes the last phase really tough. Now he only gets it once and he gains two, so one less hit, a little bit more safety for everybody. Changes to Rift Dungeons. Rift Dungeons have now been shortened as well. Uh, instead of being three stages, they're now two stages. So if you can see here, we have stage one, Groggy, with the 300k bonus, and stage two, and then the dungeon clear gives 500k. We now also do 50% um, more damage in the Groggy state than we used to, and we also get 50% more turns while during the Groggy state. So Rift Dungeons should be a lot easier. Uh, on top of that, they have uh, slightly changed the Wind and Light Beast and homunculus farming homunculus farming has become a lot easier they've lowered the requirements for homunculus farming by a ton uh sadly we still haven't gotten the changes to condensed magic crystals pure magic crystals for farming you know fight runes or determination runes or whatever whatever you're looking for but this is still a step in the right direction i'm happy with it uh, hopefully those people who were kind of on the fence about building a homunculus this should be an easy no-brainer you know now you can build it for less resources there was a slight change on the Chakram Dancer and Boomerang Warrior skill modification. Uh, initially, Sabrina, the Water Boomerang Warrior, was going to have her passive changed from 35% to 15. They have now changed it from 35 to 20. So they gave her back 5%. Awesome. I think it's great. No real complaint there for me. Um, they've also changed the name of Diva's Passive, and they have also added a dot to Diva's Passive. So for those of you who are not familiar with the changes before, Shina no longer reduces attack bar. Instead, she provides 25% bonus accuracy. 
uh, for herself and the boomerang warrior that she's paired with. Diva has been changed quite a bit. Her passive no longer has the ignored the RNG ignored defense mechanic. Instead, now it has enemy max HP percent scaling and inflicts uh, one turn dot with a 50% chance. Uh, the leader skills of all chakras have been changed. There are no more arena speed leads for that. They are now all dungeon leads. So the cool thing is Shina has a 33% attack lead and Talia has a 24% crit lead. So it'll be a little bit easier to run dungeons for some people if you need that, you know, that crit lead or that attack lead. Don't really feel like running a Lucian or maybe just don't have a Lucian. Sabrina's change, uh, we already talked about 35%. Now it's 20%. Martina's change is a little bit interesting. They changed her from gaining damage by 50% when stealing a buff up to three times and instead slowing down her ramp up and making it 10% uh, 15 times. Uh, I personally think it would have been a little bit nicer to go 15% 10 times due to the like actual ramp up time, but I do agree that she needed a nerf at the time. Scenarios and dimensional rifts in, uh, increase for EXP. So I've been told that the base EXP is increased by three three times. So before you used to get, I think it was 2,600 EXP in Feymon. Now you get 7,200. Um, on top of that, Goddess Amiria's Blessing and the EXP booster items can now be used and activated at the same time, which means we can get up to three times experience. So we will be leveling fodder like crazy now. It'll be way easier, a lot nicer for the early game and, you know, those people who don't really want to spend the time on it in the late game. The returning user benefit, kind of whatever in my opinion. If you've been away from the game for 30 days, you come back, you get Mana Stone Acquisition, Energy, and EXP. Um, Ifrits are now easier to summon, cheaper by quite a bit. It's a very nice quality of life change for the early game. I uh, don't think this one really matters. An extra 3-star in one instead of a max 2-star level. And that's about it. Besides that, uh, I want to say that I am happy that they have reset the profiles. And the reason for that is because they didn't reset them after they nerfed Hurti it. So there's a lot of people with some really, really boosted rift scores. So now let's, I'll be interested to see how fast everyone can get their scores, uh, both with rifts and other content. But that is pretty much it for... For this patch a lot of cool things a lot of things to be excited for um, if you guys are around in la this weekend hopefully i will see you at swc la for the america's cup if not have a wonderful time wherever you guys are